Those stories shortly, but first, the murder-suicide tragedy that sparked discussion all around the nation about domestic violence. Early this week, estranged father Paul Rogers killed four people, including his five-year-old daughter and himself. These incidents aren't common, but they do happen with a tragic regularity, and every time they prompt soul-searching about why. Deborah Cornwall reports. Oh, I can't understand what, what goes through a father's mind in the terms of, I have to kill my child to get to her. It doesn't have to be like that. It truly doesn't. It was six years ago on Father's Day when Robert Farquharson drove his three sons into a dam. But rather than trying to save them, he left them to drown, flagging down a passing car and heading straight to ex-wife Cindy Gambino to tell her the shocking news. You're never ever the same person. And then I think, why do fathers feel that they have to take their children's lives in order to get back at the mother? What would be important for him would be to actually see the result of his work so that he would want to witness the uh, pain on, on the surviving parent um, himself. He'd want to see it, he'd want to be there, he'd want to watch. It took Cindy Gambino three years to believe Robert Farquharson was actually capable of such a monstrous act, even supporting him through his first trial. I thought things were fairly amicable between us. I had no idea that he would ever harm the children. If anything, I thought he was going to harm himself. The discovery this week of another family murder, this time on the Gold Coast, has prompted yet another debate about what can be done to help protect mothers and children. It's obviously when these tragic events happen that we all look for answers and try to explain why it happened. And uh, unfortunately, uh, rarely is there a simple explanation. Paul Rogers had the names of his estranged partner and two children etched into his body after he separated from Tanya Simpson six months ago. On Sunday night, he went on a rampage, stabbing her to death along with a family friend. It would appear that both bodies have suffered some form of trauma. I can't say anything more beyond that. The bodies of Rogers and his five-year-old daughter, Kayla, were discovered the next day in a car in northern New South Wales. I think what's really driving these men is their own need to have power and control over the woman that they were in a relationship with. And they Social work lecturer Carolyn Harris-Johnson has just published her findings on a 10-year study of so-called filicide killings in Australia. What she found was a clear pattern among men who kill their families it's not so much the custody battles that drive men to murder, she says. More than anything, they simply want to punish their wives for leaving them in the most horrific way they can. My research showed that where these cases had occurred, there wasn't actually an existing dispute in the court. So what I see is that the proprietary attitude that these men have, both towards their wives and towards their children, children allows them to commit the offence because they are possessions of his. They're not entities in their own right. There's sliding doors in life. You decide which doors you're going to take and that was the door that he chose to take on that day was to kill the kids and himself. Dion Ferring's two children were suffocated by their father Jason Dalton on Anzac Day 2004. I knew that he was capable of murdering me because of the threats he'd made against me. Uh, but I never, ever thought he'd make, he would kill the kids. I don't think anyone knew what he was capable of. I certainly didn't. I didn't think he'd, he would do that. Um, and could anything have been done differently? No, he had it in his mind of what he was going to do. I don't think anyone could have changed his mind. Men's Line, a national counselling service, today cautioned men going through the crisis of a divorce or separation didn't need the stigma of being regarded as potentially homicidal.
And obviously men who are going through these situations may be feeling angry, hurt or scared, but that doesn't mean to say they're dangerous. So we're talking about a very, very small group of men who have a particular and intense need to control their partner and who will never accept the finality of separation. But victims and experts say we now know enough about this kind of homicidal behaviour to recognise some of the red flags. Things like veiled threats to harm the children or explicit threats to harm the children or the self are I should be warning, warning flags to everyone. My biggest thing is just get help. Don't think it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. The end of the world is when you kill your children. Deborah Cornwall reporting.